very warm welcome to all of you in this lecture on processing of ceramic parts. And what we are going to focus today is one of the important aspects of the product development process that is the ceramic part development process that is pressing. If you remember what we have covered in our previous lecture, we have seen that there are different steps involved in the processing of ceramic parts and we have seen some of the processes that are used for processing of ceramic parts. But before going on to discuss this important aspect related to the ceramics, let us see that this particular lecture where it fits into our total course of processing of non-metals. As you are well aware that we are discussing the course on processing of non-metals which has been divided into seven different modules. We have already discussed or completed our discussion on two modules that is the introductory part to this particular course and in the second module we have seen the glasses and the various techniques and tools which are used for processing of glasses. In module number 3 we have started our discussion on the basic aspects of ceramics. We have seen that how ceramics are different from metals. We have seen that what are the basic fundamental aspects related to ceramics. We have seen that what are the important properties of the ceramics that makes them different from the metals and the polymers and how these properties affect the processing of ceramic products. Then we have seen that it is very important to convert the ceramic raw materials into the ceramic powders in order to make the ceramic products. Related to the ceramic products we have seen that ceramics have got lot of applications ranging from the household or domestic applications to the aerospace as well as the bioceramic applications as well as the one of the important which is uh, most commonly known to most of us that is the space shuttle applications. So, depending upon the applications of the ceramics different types of methods are there, but in order to convert the ceramic raw material into the final ceramic product we require the production of ceramic powders. And in ceramic powders we have seen that there are different types of tools or techniques which are used for processing of ceramic powders. Basically the tools and techniques that are used for processing of ceramic powders can broadly be classified into two categories that is the mechanical type of processes and the chemical methods for processing of ceramic powders. In mechanical we have seen ball milling, we have seen roll crushing, gyratory crushing, jaw crushing as well as in chemical methods we have seen solid reactions as well as the precipitation method. So, we know some of the techniques now which are used for preparation of ceramic powders. So, once the ceramic powder is ready it has to be given a shape and once the shape has been given it has to be baked or it has to be fired in order to give it the required strength and to make it usable for different applications. So, we have got a series of steps that are required to convert the ceramic powder into the final product. So, whatever we have discussed till now that I have briefly outlined or summarized till now in today's lecture and now our focus now onwards may be right from today's lecture our focus primarily would be to convert the ceramic powders into the final product. So, just to summarize what we have discussed in this module in just 3 to 4 lines we have seen the basic properties of the ceramics, we have seen the applications of the ceramics and we have seen the methods which are used for production of ceramic powders. So, these 3 important aspects we have already discussed. Now, our focus would be that how to convert the ceramic powders into the final products. So, let us start our discussion for today's lecture. Our focus would be on pressing. Basically, we have to make a give a desired shape to the ceramic product depending upon the requirement. Now, suppose we want to make a flower vase or a decorative item of a ceramic material then we have to first make a ceramic powder or a ceramic raw material and then we have to convert that raw material or give it a particular shape and finally, we have to fire dry fire that particular shape in order to get the final product. So, these 3 steps we have already seen in the uh, last 
slides of the previous lecture that we will revise today that what are the three important steps that are involved in converting the ceramic powder into the final ceramic product. One example I have given as a decorative item. So, we will have a raw material and we will make a decorative item out of that, but what are the steps involved in that particular process that we are going to see. Uh, one of the important steps is the process of pressing and in pressing we will see that there are different types of techniques which are used for pressing like hot pressing, dry pressing, wet pressing and isostatic pressing. Each one of these have got their own advantages and limitations or disadvantages. So, we will see that what are the salient advantages and the disadvantages of these processes. So, let us now start our discussion with this introduction about our course. As I have already told again and again we are emphasizing because all these lectures are interrelated to one another. So, first of all we have to establish that this particular lecture or this particular discussion is falling under this particular module. So, once before starting the discussion today let me again tell you that this particular lecture is falling under module three of our course on processing of non-metals and in module three our focus is on ceramics. And in first four lectures of this particular module we have discussed the basic aspects of ceramics and methods that are used for production of ceramic powders. So, for those who are just listening to this particular discussion they can first go and have a view at the other four lectures that have already been delivered that that address the basic aspects of ceramics and how the ceramic powders are prepared. Now, here we are starting our discussion with the understanding that all of us know that how the ceramic powders are made. Now, ceramic powders are already available with us and now we are moving forward to convert that ceramic powder into the final product. So, introduction. A wide variety of fabrication processes are used to prepare ceramic powders for ceramic product. So, that we have already seen, it is just a revision of what we have already covered. That a wide variety, a number of processes are there which we have already seen. A fabrication processes are used to prepare ceramic powders for ceramic product. So, that already we know. Let me revise, there are mechanical type of processes, there are chemical methods or synthesis to convert the ceramic raw material or natural minerals into the usable ceramic powders. The process for a particular product is based on the material shape, complexity of the product and the property requirements as well as the cost. Now, this particular slide is correlating the two things that we have already discussed and that we are going to discuss in our next lectures as well as in this lecture. Point number one discusses that there are a wide variety of fabrication processes that are used to prepare ceramic powders for ceramic product. So, that we have already covered that is ceramic powder preparation one and ceramic powder preparation two, two lectures already we have discussed. Coming on to with the ceramic powders now how to convert into the final product for that also there are number of processes. We have the ceramic powder now we have to somehow blend it with the additives that we will be seeing and make the final product. For that also there are number of processes and some of those processes we will cover in the uh, today's lecture and in the subsequent lectures. The process for a particular product is based on the material. So, first of all the raw material we have to see what type of powder is there, what is the particle size, what is the particle size distribution, what is the chemical composition of that powder, what is the phase composition of that powder, what is the state of agglomeration in that powder. All these desirable characteristics of the powders we will see because these characteristics will define the powder basically. So, the process for the particular product. Now, whatever process we have to choose for making a particular product will be based on the raw material. The raw material is a powder here that is a ceramic powder and ceramic powder has got certain characteristics that I have already highlighted. Now, what are those characteristics? We have a particle size, particle shape, particle 
size, distribution, state of agglomeration, chemical composition, phase composition. So, all these characteristics we need to understand before choosing a particular process for making a ceramic part or a ceramic product. So, these, these fall under the material aspect, then the shape complexity of the product. So, if the product is very, very complex, we have to choose a definite process for that. And if it is a very simple product, there would be a different process that would be used to make that product. So, shape complexity is one parameter, the raw material is second parameter and the property requirements. Now, finally, what properties are desirable from the product? For example, we may be requiring a, requiring a certain degree of porosity in our final product. So, we have to choose that process which would be able to provide that much porosity or in other case, we may be requiring a very dense product. So, for that case also, we have to choose the process accordingly so that we are able to get the uniform density in the final product. And finally, the cost constraints are always there because uh, in business, cost effectiveness is one of the most important word. So, whatever process is chosen, it has to be cost effective, efficient and effective in converting the raw material into the final product. So, this particular slide I can summarize in two important ways that first point highlights on the preparation of ceramic powders for making the ceramic products and second point highlights the importance of choosing a particular process for making a ceramic product with the desirable characteristics. So, the process for the particular product is based on the raw material, shape complexity as well as the final property requirements from the final product as well as the cost effectiveness of the process. So, when we have to choose a particular process, we have to keep four things in mind. So, let us revise the four things. The four things are the material or the raw material, second is the complexity of the job, third is the property requirements of the product and finally, the cost effectiveness of the process. So, if these four things we keep in mind, we would be able, we would be able to choose the best process for converting the ceramic raw material into the final product. Now, processing of ceramic parts, this slide I have taken from our previous lecture, where we have seen that how the ceramic powders can be converted into the final product. So, this was one of the last slides of previous lecture. So, the processing of ceramic parts generally involves three basic steps. Now, what are these three basic steps we have seen? Step number one on your screen you can see it is the ceramic powder preparation. It involves crushing, milling, grinding as well as the chemical methods such as precipitation, co-precipitation and emulsif emulsifiers are also sometimes used in the synthesis of ceramic powders. So, basically first step is the ceramic powder preparation and we have already discussed this important aspect in the total processing aspects of ceramic parts. So, this is one of the first stage that we have already discussed. Second step is mixing powder particles with additives. Why do we need the additives? Additives are there to give certain special characteristics to the final product. So, basically we will add certain additives into the basic ceramic powders and finally, blend these two things together and then further do the subsequent processing in order to convert this mixture into the final product. So, the second step involved is mixing the powder particles with additives to impart special characteristics. Last stage is the shaping, drying and firing of the material. Now, shaping means that whatever mixture or whatever blend we have generated of the ceramic powder and the additives. So, we have added certain additives into the ceramic powder, we have got a mixture now that we can call as a blend. So, this blend is now given the desired shape and for this process, we would be using the dyes and the molds and the particular shape would be given to the ceramic raw material. So, ceramic raw material till now is made up of the ceramic powder and the additives which have been added to the ceramic raw material or the ceramic powder to give the special or the desirable characteristics. And finally, the drying and firing of the material 
is done in order to give it the adequate strength and make it usable for certain engineering applications. So, the, how to summarize this slide? There are importantly three things that are taken into account that point number one is the powder, point number two is the mixing of the powder with the additives and the point number three is giving a shape to that mixture and then firing it in order to get the desired properties of the final product. So, these are the three steps that are involved, but in each step there are number of processes or number of variants out of which we can choose the best variant. So, mixing the powder can be done in a number of ways. Similarly, shaping of the we can say raw material into the final form or final shape can also be done in a number of ways and the drying and firing can also be done in a number of ways. But broadly these are the three steps that are used for processing of ceramic parts. Now, what are the important types of processes that are used in these three steps? We can see for ceramic processing of uh, parts, we can use hot pressing, isostatic pressing, slip casting, extrusion, injection, molding. So, these are some of the processes which are relevant to our conversion process. Basically, our conversion process is from the ceramic powder into the final product or a solid final product product. So, from a powder we are getting a solid product. Now, this conversion process would be achieved with the help of number of processes. Now, what are those processes? On your screen you can see hot pressing, isostatic pressing, we can have even wet pressing, dry pressing that we are going to see today, slip casting, extrusion, injection molding. So, basically we want to give a particular shape to the blend that we have made by mixing the ceramic powder and the additives and to give a particular shape all these processes are important. So, basically all these processes will give a shape to the final product that is the third stage of shaping, firing, uh, shaping, drying and firing. So, shaping will be done by any of these processes that is hot pressing, isostatic pressing, slip casting, extrusion and injection molding. Now, these are other uh, details about the ceramic fabrication processes. Towards the center we can see fabrication of ceramic products from the powders by using these processes. Now, what are these processes? Pressing is one technique that we are going to discuss today. Vapor phase techniques are also there. Casting is another process. Sintering that is heating uh, to a particular temperature, finishing and machining. So, these are various processes used in fabrication of ceramic products. So, fabricated ceramic products would be made up of any of these processes. So, these processes would be used at different levels. We, we depending if you remember in the previous slide, we have seen that the choice of the process will depend upon four important parameters. Let us revise those four important parameters. So, parameter number one is the raw material that is the ceramic powder. Point number two is the property of the final product that we want. Point number three is the complexity of the final product or the intricacy or the design intricacy of the final product and last one is the cost effectiveness. So, we have to choose out of a number of processes that which process we are going to choose and the best process would give us the optimal results. So, here we have few processes which fall under the secondary processing of ceramic products. So, basically in ceramic secondary processing we will have finishing and machining. So, finishing and machining we would do once our product is ready. So, primary forming we will first give a particular shape to our product. We will do uh, all this drying and firing. The, our product is now ready, but towards the end of this product development or product processing cycle, we will go for secondary processing which is in terms of finishing and machining. Sometime we want a glazed surface, some kind of finishing coating would be provided on the final ceramic product. Sometime we want to machine it in order to make some holes, sometimes we want to make a slot in a ceramic product, so it has to be cut out. So, basically we have to see that they we sometimes secondary processing would also become inevitable. So, 
instead of focusing only on the primary aspects we should also understand that in the total product development or product processing our focus has to be on both the aspects that is the primary aspect that is giving shape to the final product and the secondary aspect that is impregnating the final product with sometimes the oil or finishing the product by providing a specific layer or a coating on the surface or making some holes. So, all these three category of processes I, as I have just told the machining, the finishing or the coating as well as the impregnating with certain oils or with certain uh, additives or sealants. So, these all processes would fall under the secondary processing. So, our focus would be to focus on the primary processing aspects of ceramic product as well as on the secondary processing aspects of ceramic product and then only the product would be ready to be used for the application for which the product has been designed as well as it has been processed or fabricated. So, this particular slide gives us a overview of the type of processes which can be used for ceramics. Now, we come on to the process which is which, which we are going to discuss today that is the process of pressing. So, in pressing you can see that pressing is one of the simple methods for processing of ceramic based product. So, basically pressing is used for giving a shape to the product. So, we have the ceramic powder, we have added the certain additives or a certain amount of moisture into the ceramic powder and now we are compressing or compacting it. So, that process we are calling as the process of pressing. So, pressing is one of the simple methods for processing of ceramic based products. Point number 2, now what is the raw material that is going into the process? So, the raw material is crushed in fine powders which is mixed with additives and then processed into the useful products. So, in pressing we have a ceramic powder it has been mixed with the additive certain amount of moisture. Now, this is taken to a equipment that we can call as a press in that we are putting this in a particular mold and then we are compressing it or we are applying the pressure in order to give it the desired shape. The shape that we will get would depend upon the shape of the die or the mold. So, basically we have a raw material we are blending that raw material or the ceramic powder with the additives and finally, we are applying the pressure. So, we will try to understand this with the help of a diagram also, but we first of all we have to understand that where this particular step is falling in the total cycle of converting the ceramic powder into the final product. So, first stage is the ceramic powder preparation which has been discussed earlier. Second stage is the mixing of this ceramic powder with the additives and the moisture and the third step is giving it a particular shape. Now, the shape can be given by different types of pressing mechanisms or pressing techniques that we are going to discuss in the subsequent slide. But first of all we should understand what do we mean by pressing. So, in pressing it is one of the simplest way of converting the ceramic powder into the ceramic product. Second is the raw material is crushed in fine powders which is mixed with additives and then pro processed into the useful product. And in pressing operation powder containing little amount of moisture is compacted under pressure. So, basically pressure is one of the important control variables in pressing. Also, we will see in hot pressing temperature is also an important control variable that has to be taken care of. Another important thing to note here is the amount of moisture that has to be used for the process of pressing that we can have a higher amount of moisture, we can have a lower amount of moisture. So, pressing is we can say one of the important processes which is used for giving a shape to the ceramic product. Now, pressing as we can see it can be done in a number of ways. So, we can do dry pressing, we can do wet pressing. So, dry and wet can be distinguished on the basis of the amount of moisture that is present in the ceramic blend or the ceramic which has ceramic powder which has been uh, blended with the certain amount of additives. So, if the moisture content is more we will say it is 
wet pressing. If the moisture content is less, we will say it is dry pressing. So, two important types of pressing is dry pressing and wet pressing. Then we have hot pressing and finally, the isostatic pressing. So, we will see all four of these that how the ceramic powder which has been mixed with additives and the moisture is compacted or pressed together to get the desired shape. So, these are the powder process, powder pressing techniques, not the powder processing techniques. The powder processing techniques we have already studied in the previous lectures, where we have seen that the powder can be processed either in the using the mechanical method of ball milling or roll crushing or the chemical method in which the reactions are used to generate the reaction products, which are, which are finally crushed to get the ceramic powders. So, these techniques are ceramic pressing techniques, the powder pressing technique. So, we have a ceramic powder which has been blended and it is can be pressed in a number of ways and four ways are four important techniques are there for pressing of the green uh, for pressing of the ceramic powder that is dry pressing, wet pressing, hot pressing and isostatic pressing. Now, let us see dry pressing. These four techniques we are going to discuss now and our focus would be to distinguish or differentiate between the four processes and finally, see the advantages and limitations of these processes and try to understand the basic working of one of these processes. So, dry pressing, this technique is used for simple shapes such as abrasive products and white wares. So, basically uh, for abrasive products and white wares, we are going to use the process of dry pressing. One important point to note on your screen, you can see point number 1 is that it is used for simple shapes. So, if we want to make a complex shape, then dry pressing is not advisable. So, if a complex shape is there, then we will have to choose some other pressing technique. So, we have uh, with us four important pressing techniques and there can be others also, but out of the four, we there would be certain technique which would be advisable for complex products that we will see, but dry pressing is advisable for simple shapes and it is advisable for certain important applications like for making abrasive products, where we have uh, we can have different types of abrasive products and the white fears. Now, let us see the amount of moisture that can be there. So, water content in the powder mixture is very low less than 4 percent. So, we can use or we use the in case of dry pressing very low moisture content. Various binders organic as well as inorganic may be added in the mixture depending on the requirement. So, this is three four steps whatever we have uh, highlighted on in this particular slide dip, uh, are related to the blending of the raw material together. The pressing would be done, we can say the mechanism of pressing would be similar only, we would be applying pressure on this material that we are making or the raw material that we are creating for a final product. So, we can see the point number 1 relates to the shape of the product and the applications of the products. Point number 2 highlights towards the raw material, that the raw material that would be used for dry pressing would have lower amount of moisture. Third point also highlights with the raw material, highlights the raw material that is the various types of binders, that is organic as well as inorganic binders can be used, that is they may be added to the mixture depending upon the requirement. So, binders sometimes may be required, may not be required. Now, this relates to the final property of the product. Why I am highlighting these points? Because in the very beginning of today's discussion, we have seen that if we choose a particular process for a particular application, we have to satisfy at least three or four important criteria that for a particular type of a material, a particular process would be chosen for a particular type of shape, a particular process would be chosen. And then for a particular property requirement in the final product, we would be choosing a specific process. And finally, the cost effectiveness of process also has to be taken into account. So, here we are seeing that depending upon the material, this dry pressing would be done when the moisture content is less. Binders may be added, may not be added, this depends upon the final requirements of the product that we are going to make after the dry pressing of the ceramic 
raw materials and finally, the production rate is high in dry pressing method and closed dimensional tolerances are achieved. So, this particular slide gives us the summary of the dry, process, dry pressing technique. So, related to the material aspects of dry pressing, related to the process aspects of dry pressing, we can see that this process is good as far as the dimensional tolerances are concerned. Closed dimensional tolerances can be achieved with the dry pressing. Production rate is high that is related to the cost that if the production rate is high, the cost of product would automatically come down because it is used, it would be used for high production rates. So, basically in this particular slide, we have highlighted the dry pressing technique for converting the ceramic raw material which has been mixed with various types of additives or binders like organic as well as inorganic binder. There is certain amount of moisture that is present in the ceramic powder and this particular mixture is then subjected to the pressing and finally, we are able to generate a particular shape of the ceramic depending upon the shape of the mold or the die. Now, let us try to understand this with the help of a diagram. So, on your screen, I am going to draw a very simple diagram in which we will see that how the actual action takes place. This is the upper punch, so you can see this is the upper punch. So, we have a upper punch, then we can have a simple representation of a die or we can say a mold and then we have a lower punch. So, we have a upper punch and we have a lower punch. Now, the upper punch we can apply the pressure. So, this is pressure application and where is the raw material? The raw material is placed here. Now, what is the raw material? The raw material basically is the ceramic powder plus additives then what we can have additives are there, ceramic powder is there and then what we can have? We can have certain binders also. So, it may also have certain binders so we have binders ceramic powder and the certain additives and then we these two upper and the lower punch would come closer we can operate both or one can be operating and this we will get out of this we will be generating a particular shape. So, this is the process of dry pressing. So, finally, we will get this shape. What has gone into this? Ceramic powder plus additives plus binders. 
so this is uh, we can say a simple representation of the dry pressing technique in which we have upper punch we have a lower punch and the pressure is applied the raw material is put inside the die or the mold and finally when the pressure acts on that certain amount of moisture is always present there are additives and the binders that are mixed with the ceramic powder now this mixture is kept inside the die and the punch when the pressure acts we get a final shape now this particular shape is not we can say directly in the usable form certain other processes have to be carried out on this particular shape that has been generated here in order to make it a usable ceramic product but this pressing is also one of the important processes that is required to make a ceramic product from the raw material now we have been able to generate a shape of the product now once the shape has been got subsequent processing on this shape would be able to give us the final ceramic product so we have seen the dry pressing technique now let us see this the same diagram that i have tried to draw we have a upper punch we have a lower punch this is the raw material which has ceramic powders binders additives and once the pressure is applied by the upper punch where we can see this is converted into this shape and this is the final shape which has been made out of the ceramic powder so we have been able to make a shape from the ceramic powder so we have a solid shape in our hands now and this shape now or this particular part now would be subjected to the subsequent operations to make it a usable ceramic product this is we can say a basic pressing mechanism now let us now try to understand the other type of pressing techniques there is uh, we can say the basic mechanism more or less remains same but there are few differences that we would try to highlight so in wet pressing the product is processed under high pressure in a mold moisture content is relatively high so we we can see that in dry pressing the moisture content was low whereas in wet pressing the moisture content is 10 to 15 percent so in wet pressing we can see that the moisture content is high and therefore the name wet pressing is coming into picture next step is the hot pressing in this method both pressure because if we have seen in dry pressing as well as in wet pressing the pressure is applied whereas the name of the process also is pressing which means the pressure has to be applied so in hot pressing also the pressure has to be applied but an additional process variable or the operating condition comes into picture that is the temperature so in this method both pressure pressure has to be applied in wet and dry pressing also in hot pressing also pressure is being applied but the temperature is additional thing are applied which reduces the void content of the part and produces a denser and stronger product now in previous cases that is dry pressing as well as in wet pressing we may not get a very dense product specifically in case of dry pressing but in hot pressing because we are also applying the temperature along with the pressure one of the important advantage that we would drive derive out of this would be that we will get denser and stronger products but important point to not note in hot pressing is that the die that we are going to use it may be wearing out at a very faster rate why because the temperature is also there the pressure is also there as well as the ceramic particles also are abrasive in nature so the die life is also an issue in case of the hot pressing technique coming on to the isostatic pressing sometimes in some of the pressing techniques we may not be able to get a uniform density all around the bulk of the product but in isostatic pressing is it is used to obtain uniform density in the product so the problem of non uniform density in the total bulk of the product we saw at some places we may have very dense we can say 
part in other uh, part or away from the place where the pressure is applied we may not get uh, adequate density. So, there is a density gradient that may be established in the ceramic product that is the point where the pressure is acting we have a dense uh, we can say part away from uh, we can uh, say away from the pressure application point we may not get equal density. So, there is a density variation in many pressing techniques, but in isostatic pressing we would be getting the uniform density all around the ceramic product. So, isostatic pressing is used to obtain uniform density in the product. Insulators of spark, this is the application for which the isostatic pressing can be used. Insulators of spark plug are fabricated by isostatic pressing methods. So, the powder mixture is placed around a central mandrel pin in a flexible mold on which the fluid pressure is applied from outside. So, this is the isostatic pressing we have also covered when we discussed in uh, phase 1 the powder metallurgy technique. In powder metallurgy also isostatic pressing is used and it was discussed in lot of detail there. So, in isostatic pressing basically we apply the pressure through the fluid from all the directions and when the pressure is applied from all the direction the density in the final product is very very uniform. So, there is no density gradient through the product we get a uniform density in the product. So, basically in other processes as we see that in case of dry pressing or wet pressing if the size of the ceramic product is very large or if we say it has got a lot of height and we are applying the pressure from top and bottom the density close to the pressure application site would be high and the density away would be low. So, we do not want a density gradient because when we are applying the pressure from top and bottom suppose from both sides. So, the density is high in this region, high in this region, but is low in the central region. So, that we do not want and for to overcome that we may be applying the pressure from all sides from top bottom and from all the side through the fluid and then we will be getting a uniform density in the product and that type of pressing is called the isostatic pressing. Now, let us come on to the advantages as well as the limitations of all these pressing techniques. So, what uh, let us first see all the four types of pressing that we have seen. We have seen dry pressing, we have seen wet pressing, we have seen hot pressing, we have seen isostatic pressing. Each one of these has got certain salient characteristics, one or two salient characteristics for each process we have seen like for dry pressing the moisture content is low, it is used for simple shapes, we have seen what type of binders are added into that process that is the salient characteristics of dry pressing. In wet pressing the moisture content is higher, in hot pressing temperature is also one of the variables. In isostatic pressing we apply the pressure from all sides and we are able to get a uniform density throughout the bulk of the ceramic product. So, these are the salient characteristics of these pressing techniques. Now, this particular slide gives us a summary of the different pressing techniques that we have seen. So, in dry pressing the production rate is very high which was given in the slide also and tolerance control is also better. So, better dimensional control or better tolerance control is there in case of dry pressing. Wet pressing production rate is high as, as in the case of dry pressing and this can be used for getting intricate shapes. So, basically on the basis of shapes if we have to take a decision that for simple shape which pressing mechanism should be used we should always go for dry pressing. If the shape is a little bit a intricated shape, intricate shape or a complex shape we should go for wet pressing. Why? Because it is a we can say rule of thumb that when the moisture content is high it becomes easily moldable, but there is a limitation to the moisture content also. A very high moisture content is also not desirable. So, for a intricate or a complex shape we can use wet pressing technique. Hot pressing if we want strong and dense parts because in this particular case we will get very high density. Isostatic pressing if we want uniform density distribution all through the bulk of the 
product. So basically all these pressing techniques have got, got their own salient advantages and, and have got their own advantages and specific application spectrum. So depending upon the final product that we are going to produce from the ceramic powder, we can choose that which type of press, pressing technique we should choose. But Apart from the advantages, each one of these has got certain limitations also because all processes cannot be used. There is no process which is universal in nature and can be applied to all types of conditions and requirements. So there are processes which have got certain limitations and these processes also have got certain limitation. So let us now comes to the, come to the sorry disadvantages. Now what are the disadvantages? Dry pressing, one of the disadvantages is non-uniform density that can be overcome by the isostatic pressing because in the isostatic pressing we get a uniform density distribution. So in dry pressing one important point is non-uniform density, then the wear resistance of the dyes is also an issue in case of the dry pressing. In wet pressing it can be used for smaller jobs. Dry pressing can be used for simpler jobs and wet pressing can be used for smaller job. It means that if there is a very large job at hand, then wet pressing is not advisable. Similarly, the dimensional accuracy is also an issue with re related to the wet process pressing technique. So the dimensional accuracy is also not very high in case of wet pressing. Hot pressing controlled atmosphere because the temperature is also an issue therefore the pressing has to be done under the controlled atmosphere and the dye life as I have already indicated is an issue with case of in case of hot pressing because the temperature is also high and therefore the life of the dye becomes an issue. The, we, the dyes that are used for hot pressing of ceramic powders will have shorter lives. Isostatic pressing means it is adding to the cost because this press pressing techniques require pressing technique require a special set of equipment and that equipment would add to the cost of the we can say infrastructure required for converting the ceramic raw material into the final product. So with this we come to the end of today's discussion. The focus of today's discussion was pressing of the ceramic powder to generate a shape or to shape the ceramic parts. Different methods can be used to generate the shapes that we have seen in the very beginning of today's lecture, number of processes were outlined. Our focus in today's lecture was pressing of the ceramic powder, ceramic powders mixed with additives and the binders. So we have a mixture of ceramic powder additive and the binder, it has to be pressed to generate a particular type of shape. For that we have seen there are four types of pressing mechanisms that can be used that is dry pressing, wet pressing, hot pressing and isostatic pressing. Salient features of each one of these we have tried to understand and we have seen what are the advantages and the disadvantages of each one of this pressing technique. In our subsequent lecture our focus would be on the other techniques that can be used to give shape to the ceramic powders and finally how the product can be made usable with the help of the other secondary processing techniques. So with this we come to the end of today's lecture and in our next lecture our focus would be the other processing techniques that can be used for processing of ceramic parts. Thank you.